Yay! <laughs> I tell you what. <sighs> Please join me in this morning's call to worship. Yeah, okay, good. We gathered this morning to find joy and comfort in one another. Come, let us worship together. Ah, so here we are at the beginning of the 2022 to 2023 church year, where we use so much technology that sometimes things just happen. So I want to say thank you to Dave and Taylor for working really hard to get that all squared away. Well done. It's hard to work under pressure. Good job. We're going to use a little bit more technology. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. And we're going to use a little bit more technology right now. So we have a special recorded greeting this morning from the president of our Unitarian Universalist Association, Reverend Dr. Susan Frederick Gray, who is the first woman elected to the leadership of our association. She's got a, um, an in-gathering, as she calls it, welcome for us. Hello, Unitarian Universalists. I'm the Reverend Susan Frederick Gray, president of your Unitarian Universalist Association. It is so good to be with you for another season of ingathering. This time marks the end of summer when we come together to renew our commitments to each other, to our Unitarian Universalist communities, and to begin another vital year of ministry. In the summer months, I hope that you and your loved ones found some time to rejuvenate your bodies and spirits, to rest, to enjoy the long summer days, to pursue hobbies that bring you joy. I know that the world is all too much, and it matters that we take time to rest, for rest is necessary for the quality of our lives, of and of our spirits. We are all living in what I have come to call a liminal time, a time in between. The pandemic has upended so much. After two years plus of virtual and hybrid gatherings in our congregations, the ways in which people connect to religious community has broadened and new patterns are still emerging. On so many levels, what comes next is still unfolding and being imagined. As Unitarian Universalists, we are called to care for each other and to create resilient, theologically imaginative spiritual community that sustains us and inspires us as we navigate what's to come and what is needed. And there is so much needed. From support access to reproductive care to showing up through you, you the vote to elect leaders that will work to protect our children, our planet, our future, and our deeply held values. It also matters that we attend to doing the fundamentals of religious community, like supporting children and families recovering from, and in some cases still experiencing the collective trauma of the last few years. Our world needs our message of love and justice. Our world needs brave, bold, and loving communities that are in the struggle for equity, dignity, and compassion. One way to join with your sibling Unitarian Universalists in this work is through UU The Vote. You can find out more at uuthevote.org. Your Unitarian Universalist Association is the embodiment of the covenant that all of our congregations make to each other to support each other. And the UUA is here because of your commitment to make and support and amplify our values to support each of our congregations in their time of need and to be more than any of us are alone. At the UUA, we are committed to being steadfast partners with you in this liminal time and in all that is ahead. As you gather in this sacred hour, join again in community, 
May we each remember the hundreds and thousands of Unitarian Universalists that are gathering all across our association, celebrating and calling themselves back into the power and the possibility of faithful community. For we are not alone and we make each other strong. I send you my love and my blessings as we enter this new congregation year and celebrate in gathering. Much love and deep care to all of you. Good morning, Birmingham Unitarian Church. <laughs> It is good to be together again. I'm Sarah Constantakis, by the way, Director of Congregational Life. Whether you're joining us here in the sanctuary, remotely via Zoom, or watching this recording later, it is good to connect with you. As we continue learning and exploring what it means to be a multi-platform church, a Unitarian Universalist congregation in the year 2022, we are introducing a new worship element starting today. We're aware of the need to create a bridge between online and in-person participants. We're calling this new connection opportunity, getting to know our virtual neighbors. And it goes like this. We'll start by showing the folks who are currently on Zoom up here on the screen and ask them to turn on their cameras and give us a wave. Oh, here they come. There they are. Yay! <laughs> all right, look at all those faces. Gloria, Beth, Nancy, Suki, Aletha and Alan, Jean, Priscilla, Elizabeth, Bun, Amelia, Sarah, Abby, Donna, Cynthia. If anybody else wants to turn on their camera, go ahead. <laughs> All right, so great to see all of you. So that's gonna be, the, that's the first part of our greeting our virtual neighbors. Now, we who are gathered here in the sanctuary are going to turn to face that camera in the back of the sanctuary and give them a wave. <laughs> Awesome. Yay. <laughs> Whenever and however we connect with BUC, we are building BUC at home, on campus, in the world, every day. We are Birmingham Unitarian Church, and we are building the beloved community. We join with other Unitarian Universalists around the world as we light our chalice. The chalice is a symbol of our free religious faith that dates back to the beginning of the Second World War. The Unitarian Service Committee was providing less than authentic passports to help Jews escape Nazi persecution. They needed a logo to make the, the passports look more official, so they commissioned Austrian artist Hans Deutsch, and the image of the flaming chalice was born. We light this chalice as a reminder of who we are as Unitarian Universalists and as Birmingham Unitarian Church. We are a people of hope. We are a people of fiery passion, committed to justice, steadfast in our love for each other and the larger world. We believe in the inherent worth and dignity of all people. We are a people of covenant, who choose to be together out of love and mutual concern. We are individuals and we are one community, bound together by desire to be together. May it be so. Please join it. Oh, I can actually take my mask off. Uh, please join us as you're willing and able to embody the words of our hymn. We will lead you through the lyrics with some hand movements, starting with Sarah, then Ash, and then myself.
The mission of Birmingham Unitarian Church is to be a free and welcoming religious community that encourages lives of integrity, learning, service, and joy. One way we live out this mission is by giving half of our weekly offering to a nonprofit organization that shares our values and addresses needs in one of these areas. Environmental action, economic justice, civic engagement, and racial justice. We support a new organization each month. It's back to school time. And this month's plate recipient is one of our cherished longtime projects, support of Walt Whitman Elementary School in Pontiac, which BUCers have been doing since 1998. We support learning for K through five students by stocking and operating a mobile library in the school, tutoring, and if pandemic safety conditions permit this year, we'll resume our after school bananagrams program. Your offering will be used to buy books for the library and supplies for our programs. Let there be an offering in support of our beloved community and organizations that build the world we dream about. This morning's offering will now be received with gratitude. Ushers, please, please come forward.
We are a church of open minds, loving hearts, and helping hands. With gratitude, we dedicate this offering to the good works of our congregation and dedicate ourselves to its service. We have come to the time in our service that we set aside for prayer and centering. We start with a sharing of joys and sorrows as, as we do every week. Today we'll start with some heavy news. We join this morning with Carol Jackson and, and her kids in sorrow. Alex Sellis died on September 8th after a long struggle with normal pressure hydrocephalus, a disease that is very much like Parkinson's. Carol wants you to know how much the family appreciate the people who have reached out over the past few weeks while Alex has been in hospice care. There will be a service and more information about that will be out later this week or early this week. Also this morning from Janet Brown, we hear about Cindy Gunnup. Cindy is a um, volunteer for Mama's Coffee House in the refreshments area. She fell and broke her hip on Thursday, and she is currently at um, Beaumont River Oaks in the hospital there. The sorrows that we feel in our individual lives are amplified and shared on a larger scale today, too. Today marks the 21st anniversary of the attacks on our nation. We wrestle with the complicated and toxic political shockwaves after that event. And we remember those who were lost and we continue to resist accepting brutality as the necessary or appropriate response. Our world also lost a great leader this week. Queen Elizabeth II was a symbol of steadiness and poise and the importance of bringing a touch of humanity to tradition. Uh, one bu -er is personally touched by this. Catherine Connolly uh, says that it was a joy to share much of my life on earth with Queen Elizabeth II, a woman of few words. Amid life's thorny times, there are also roses and buds. Our congregation has an abundance of joy today, too. We begin with a joy that was submitted online by Suki Darlington. Suki starts with some sorrows. Unfortunately, last Thursday, at my doctor's urging, I drove to the ER at Beaumont Royal Oak, and I had another aggressive infection that required getting a proper antibiotic into her IV. She continues, I managed to get home last Tuesday, and I'm taking double the amount of oral antibiotic per day as well as for 14 weeks. But then she continues, I feel overwhelming gratitude to be able to come home and sit outside and just drink in the universe and the incredible beauty outside here. She also wants to thank the personnel who are outstanding at the hospital and the kindness of her daughter-in-law who helped to get the dog to boarding and pick up groceries and get some wash started when she got home. She says, thanks for your good wishes, everybody. We have some other joys and good things happening in our congregation. I wanna say a couple of personal joys. I am so grateful to our worship associates and our guest musicians who provided excellent worship services over the summer. As I mentioned earlier, I now have thoughts again. I'm really excited to be able to share some of them. So thank you for letting me take a few weeks away. Um, I also am really thankful to have Kathy Sherman here with us today playing flute. Thank you for joining us. And look at this thing. Our chalice snuffer broke at the end of last year after several years of service, and Dave Sabah made a new one for us, and it's very beautiful. It's bespoke. It is designed specifically to go with our thing, and I'm very grateful to a guy who I think maybe is in church for the first time today being willing to take the time to make a snuffer. <laughs> the 
a lot of talent in our congregation, and I'm grateful for that. I'm also really glad to see some babies here, and I just want to also say babies are welcome, and I hope that they're loud personally. I enjoy that. Uh, but there is also a room over here if anybody needs a change or a change of pace um, that you can, you can use at any time. Lastly, Kelly Taylor. Kelly Taylor says, I am happy to share that my most recent CT scan is negative and that she remains cancer free. Ooh, I'm remiss, I'm sorry, there was one more. Uh, this is from Andy and Mary Masson who are celebrating their oldest grandchild, Bryce, becoming a college freshman at the University of Madison, Wisconsin, wishing him well on his journey in life. Also a great celebration. Will you join me now in a moment of prayer and centering? Spirit of love and life, unifying force that is called by many names and no name at all. We are so grateful to be here together as a community this morning. We're grateful to share in each other's joys and sorrows and to know what it means to have those burdens lightened and to have those joys amplified by being together. There is a love that is holding us. There's a love that is holding all that we love. We rest in this love and the comfort of each other. May it be so. Amen and blessed be. Once upon a time, there was a drop of water named Higgins. Higgins was no ordinary drop of water. He was a drop with a dream. Higgins lived in a valley where it had not rained for a very long time. So all the lovely green grass was turning brown. All the beautiful flowers were wilting and all the trees were starting to droop. Higgins had a dream that one day the valley would be a beautiful place again. But what could he do? He was only a drop of water. One day Higgins decided to travel and tell the others about his dream. All the other drops listened very politely, but no one believed that his dream would come true. Higgins, one said, get your head out of the clouds. You can't spend your whole life dreaming. Higgins decided that he had to do something to make his dream come true. So he began to think and think and think. One day, as he was walking by an old bucket, he got an idea. If enough of us drops of water got into this bucket, Higgins thought, there would be enough water to sprinkle on a few flowers to help them grow and become beautiful again. Eagerly, Higgins told everyone his great idea, but everyone thought that he was being foolish. That Higgins is nothing but a dreamer, they said. Higgins decided 
that he had to do something to convince the others that he was right. So he said to them, I don't know about you, but I'm getting into that bucket. I hope that some of you will join me. Then there might be enough water to at least help some flowers grow beautiful again. So Higgins ran as hard as he could, hopped way up into the air, and landed with a kerplunk in the bucket. And there he sat, just a drop in the bucket. <laughs> For a long time, Higgins was very lonely. It seemed like no one else was going to join him. But after a while, some of the other drops could see that the grass was brown and the flowers were wilting and the trees were drooping. They all agreed that something must be done. Suddenly one drop shouted, I'm going in the bucket with Higgins. And they leaped into the air and kerplunk landed in the bucket. Then two other drops yelled, wait for us. And they hopped into the air and landed into the bucket. Then 10 drops leaped into the air and into our bucket. Then 30, then 50, and hundreds of drops came from all around just to hop into the bucket. Soon, the bucket was completely full of water, but there were still more drops that wanted to join. So they found another bucket and hopped in. Before long, there were two buckets of water, then three, then four, then 10, and then hundreds, then thousands of buckets of water. Along came a powerful breeze that blew over all the buckets and the water flowed together and make a mighty stream. Everywhere the water flowed, the grass turned green and the flowers bloomed and the trees stood tall and straight once more. All this happened because Higgins had a dream and his dream came true because he knew that although he was just a drop in the bucket, enough drops in the bucket make a bucket full. And when there are enough buckets with the wind behind them, then justice will roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream.
It is so good to be back to a regular church here. There's something so comforting in that, that rhythm and that pattern. We have church throughout the year, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm super grateful to the people who make that possible. But this is the day when we hit that programmatic reset button. We just, all the weird stuff, it's done, and we're just gonna start over. <laughs> it's gonna be great. The kids bump up a grade, new programs kick off. I'm full of ideas, and so is Sarah. There's gonna be so much stuff happening. We start fresh. And you know, this is the beginning of my fifth year here. I know, right? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. And every year that we've done this together, and there were a few that was very weird, <laughs> it was online, you know, but every year that we've done it, though, I am truly, truly moved. I am. There's a, a lump in the throat, a little swell in the heart to see all of your faces again, and sometimes some new faces, which is really exciting. And for those of you who are joining us remotely, I want you to know your presence is very much felt as well. I'm really looking forward to seeing you on the screen now, and I'm so glad that we've worked that out. David, Taylor, thank you. The regathering of Home Sunday is profound and something I think we all look forward to, right? We're all here in one form or another, ready to start something that is new and to reconnect with something that is familiar. There's a beautiful paradox there I just love. Birmingham Unitarian Church is a mainstay in the liberal religious landscape of southeastern Michigan. We're doing it again. Here we are renewing that lease. Yes, we're gonna keep doing this another year. Our congregation was founded by people who wanted to do Unitarianism in their own neighborhoods, and that was at the cutting edge of their time. Taking it out of an urban center into a suburb was risky, and they were willing to do it. And that's who we are. In the intervening years, a couple of things have changed. They've changed in Unitarian Universalism. They've changed in our church and in our world, right? It is, after all, a living tradition. Unitarian Universalism it is not what it was in the 1940s. Actually, it was just Unitarianism in the 1940s when BEC was founded. It's not what it was in the 1960s when many UUs were at the front of the civil rights movement. It isn't what it was in the 90s when that gray hymn book was published with what was once considered radically inclusive language and is now a little. Right? <laughs> Unitarian Universalism is not what it was in the early 2000s when our congregations refused to jump on the anti-Muslim bandwagon. <clears throat> At each of those moments, Unitarian Universalism and BEC took a crucial stance for freedom of thought and the call to greater inclusion. And it just kept on going. We take that commitment, we just keep on going. Throughout all of these changes, BUC has not been, nor will it ever be, left in the dust. We keep pace with the changes in, in our society, our culture, and the changes in our living tradition. And it's hard, and it's beautiful, and it's worth it. To that end, our Board of Trustees has adopted a vision of ministry that will guide us in the next two years. Our worship life, our programming, our administrative decisions, through the end of the 2024 church year, so two years. We've decided to point ourselves toward having more fun, being more inclusive, and taking better care of the planet. Three visions of ministry that are in line with who we've always been. None of that is new. Who we've always been, and it will continue to guide our way into the, the challenge, the unknown of what it is to be a church in the 21st century. Onward and upward forever, so they say. Homecoming Sundays in UU churches are often built around water communion. We will have our own water communion, so they employ a lot of water language. The story of Higgins, the raindrop. Also, can we hear it for Shannon in their first, like, you know, time for all ages? <laughs> And the story of Higgins the raindrop water is a symbol of collective power, right? Higgins inspired the other raindrops to come together and accomplish a goal. Ours is a faith in which we depend upon ourselves to drive each other to create change in the world. And as we gather this morning for a service and a ritual centered on water, we know 
that our climate is in crisis and it would be silly not to talk about it. We know that Western states are experiencing unprecedented droughts. There are currently 35 uncontrolled large fires in our nation right now. And it's overwhelming. The changes that each of us can make in our individual lives can feel paltry in comparison to that devastation. But as a church, that collective power, we are capable of achieving more than we can in our individual lives. Our vision of ministry calls us to meaningful action that significantly reduces consumption of non-renewable resources for our church, but also we are our church, us as individuals and also our campus, right? Water is necessary for life, and so is often used as a metaphor for great longing. Our Chalice Choir just delivered a riveting and spirited anthem based on some beautiful ancient Hebrew poetry, the 42nd Psalm. Also, can we hear it from our new pianist, Myra Walker? So I want to share a little more of that original text with you. I know people get twitchy about the Bible, but I don't feel like we can just take the first line of the psalm. I think we need to talk a little bit more about what, what's going on in there. And I know that one of the issues with psalms especially is that it can feel a little stark. But also, I want to remind you that the Bible was written by people trying to figure out their lives that were often very stark. And so that's why there is this stark language there. So I invite you just to give this a gracious listening. This is from the New Revised Standard Updated Edition, Psalm 42, verses 1 through 3. As the deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come to behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night while people continually say to me, where is your God? That's just verses one through three. Beloved, we gather this morning with water that we have collected from rivers, streams, lakes, the tap and the bathroom lobby. <laughs> but as we do so, we know that there are thousands of people in our country who are facing the stark reality of life without access to clean drinking water. We were about to throw a bunch of water in a bowl that's cleaner than water than some people have coming out of their taps. And we have to say that, right? And that includes Jackson, Mississippi. It includes migrant camps all along the US-Mexico border. It still includes Flint six years later. And I will also lift up Detroit where the water shutoff moratorium is set to expire at the end of this calendar year. It is not an accident it is not bad luck that these are communities that are predominantly black indigenous people of color or BIPOC. That didn't just happen. Water is life and I will be so bold as to say that it is a human right. And when people of color disproportionately live without access to safe drinking water, something is wrong. This is a stark reality that we must acknowledge. We have to, we have to. It's also overwhelming, but we can't just ignore it. Our vision of ministry through the end of the 2024 church year calls us to direct our resources and our decision-making toward fully and explicitly being anti-racist, anti-oppressive, and multicultural. As Unitarian Universalists, as Birmingham Unitarian Church in the world, we dream about everybody has access to clean drinking water we are brave enough to deal honestly with racism and we are bold enough audacious enough to believe that we can actually do something about it we don't just dream of that world we are not a thoughts and prayers kind of church we go out and we build it Something that we have to look forward to this church year is a new venture in worship. So sometimes months have five Sundays, right? There's gonna be three of those. And this is what we're going to do. We're gonna meet in Hodas Hall. We're gonna have a very quick little worship service, just the things you have to do, like light a chalice, right? And then we're gonna do an action project together. 
Because why wouldn't we? I hear so many people talk about how they wish they could be involved in volunteerism, but they just don't have the time. Well, we've already set aside an hour on a Sunday morning. So let's use some of those to do something together. And then let's eat some pancakes, yeah? Okay. Working together on those service projects will support us in building relationships within our congregation. So will the pancakes. This is one way in which we will live out our vision of ministry to foster a stronger culture of engagement, stewardship, and fellowship. One way. These are audacious goals. Drika tells me it's called a BHAG, a big, hairy, audacious goal. We're going to do it. We come from people who just decided that they wanted to do Unitarian Universalism in their neighborhoods, so they just met in somebody's house, and that was just what they were going to do. Well, we're just going to do it. We have stuff we need to do. We're just, we're just going to do it. We're going to figure it out together. We're also, speaking of having fun and engagement, going to have game nights, a new weekly spiritual practice group, reinvigorated small group ministry, a ton of other opportunities to connect both in person and online. There is a sign up fair at after service. I hope you will stick around for it. Also, we have coffee again. Remember coffee? Yes. And don't worry, for the sign up fair, we have a plan for those of you who are joining us online too. We have so much to do and we have so much to look forward to this year. As we come together from our individual lives to form this beloved community, we bring forward everything that we have been as we discover everything that we can be. We remain a people who care about each other and about the greater world. We believe that we can work together to create positive change. So whether today is your first time visiting us or you've been here since before the Unitarians and the Universalists got along together, you belong here. Welcome home. Oh, I'm gonna clap for coffee, but not me. <laughs> Uh, all right. I would like to invite up our Director of Congregational Life, Sarah Constantakis, our Director of Religious Education, Shannon Simon, our Co-Directors of Music Ministries, Stephen and Abha Deering. The Sunday after Labor Day has special importance for many Unitarian Universalist congregations. This is our homecoming, the official start of the church year when we strike that balance between the familiar and the new. We are together again, singing the same songs, about to participate in a familiar ritual, and yet we know that we are not what we once were. We are not who we once were. As we enter this church here, we know we are not the same, but we bring with us the comfort and the security of the past. The first water communion was held in 1980 when Carolyn McDade and Lucille Shuck Longview created a worship service for the Women in Religion Continental Convocation of Unitarian Universalists. The convocation was held in our state capital, Lansing. The ritual they developed uses water as a symbol of our interconnectedness. It is in this spirit that our congregation celebrates water communion each year. Birmingham Unitarian Church is a promise that has been built over decades and entrusted to our care. We are stewards of this community and our traditions. As rivers gather to form the ocean, we gather to form BUC. We come from different backgrounds and identities. We have different gifts and ideas. These differences are our strength. Each of us has something to offer to the life of our beloved community. In our individual diversity, we are one community. As Unitarian Universalists, we value the interconnected web of life. 
We are connected in ways that are mysterious yet simple, profound but yet ordinary. In this church, we do not share a common belief. Instead, we share a mutual concern for one another. The value of human relationships is the core of our faith tradition. Our re religious life is built on covenants that call us to healthy and accountable relationships. These relationships embolden and support our search for truth and meaning. We don't always know where that faith exploration will lead us, but we do know that we will find shelter in the beloved community. As we navigate the waters of our individual faith journeys, we find rest and renewal in each other. Our church is a place of comfort and a catalyst for change. We are comforted by shared traditions and familiar worship expressions. We gather on Sunday mornings to share stories and songs that remind us of our church's history and the congregational life that we've built. At the same time, our Unitarian Universalist faith challenges us to remain open and curious. We should never be satisfied that we have found the one right answer to life's big questions. In worship services, we encounter that which is beyond our individual lives, yet deeply a part of who we are. Some of us call this God, some call it the spirit of life or the power of human community. Our church is not a place of answers, but a place of bold questions. Our worship life is a container for these questions, both supporting and moving us forward. As we celebrate water communion together, I'm gonna to invite you to uh, be dismissed by the ushers who will take you this way up to the center. You will go back the direction from whence you came. You know, you'll get there eventually. Um, it's been a while and also I'm so glad when we have some newer folks. So if you don't have water, that's okay. It's a symbol. I invite you to come up even if you don't have water and just place your hands on, on the bowl. With that, we will begin.
now into this world as a beacon of hope and joy. Go in love, go in peace. Now that our worship has ended, our service begins. May it be so. Amen. Blessed be.